Hello everyone, this is Nitesh and we are here with another game review. Today's game review is... It's a game a lot of people have just never even really heard of. It didn't get nearly enough attention when it came out. It was pretty glossed over when it came out, but it was actually a very decent game very early on in the PlayStation 3's lifetime. We're talking about Folklore. Now, first off, I'm recording here instead of at the normal place because I need this microphone. I had a show last night and my voice is dead. So, going to move on with the review. The way I like starting them is starting from the end. It's definitely worth checking out. Right now, it is an old enough game that if you can find it, it will be at a very low price point. It'll be a good playthrough if you don't plan on spending too much time on it. It's not a very long game, but the gameplay is well done enough and polished enough to continually be an enjoyable experience to play through. So, we're going to start with the story here. It's pretty decent. It's actually got a very nice setup, and I would be lying if I said it didn't handle it well. The general premise of the game is that there's a mystery you are trying to solve in this village which is very close to the boundary between this world and the netherworld. So people die and you go into the netherworld after them and try to find out, wait, what just happened? What's going on here? And, you know, that's a very nice angle to it. And it really does handle it well. You play as two characters. Ellen, a young university student who received a letter from her long-lost mother saying she would be in this village. And... The other character is Keats, a sarcastic, skeptical journalist who gets a phone call from someone saying they're being attacked. So he goes off he goes off to find out what was going on there. Shortly after they both arrive is when the deaths start happening. And the whole time, you're busy trying to sort through this town's history to find out what's kicking all this off. Why is this happening now? During your first night in that village, you're witness to the veil between the normal world and the netherworld wearing thin. So that's what introduces you to the netherworld and that whole aspect of the gameplay. Speaking of which, the gameplay is actually very well done. The normal world segments, it's not really something special. And really in a lot of ways, it's not over the top amazing. But it's certainly well done. I played a couple of times through and there weren't any points where I actually came across any glitches, which that is something a lot of widely regarded games can't even boast. And, you know, considering what the gameplay is, the whole time you're going through fighting 
evil spirits called folks. And when you beat them, you can drain their essence and use their power. For Keats, he is a lot more of a physical fighter. So when he summons folks to fight for him, it's right at him. So it's more like he's attacking. Ellen is a little more tactical. She summons the folks at a bit of a distance. So she's standing off to the side, attacking, and you know, the way they use the fact that there's not a lot of unique folks. In a lot of those cases, they're both using the same folks in just different ways, and it's done pretty well. Now, I mean, like I said, it's not going to completely blow you away with how brilliant it is, but it does work. The storytelling style, this is, it's both a good thing and a bad thing because I like when people try doing things stylistically, but the problem is that this game is not very consistent with it. With this game, it's, there's three ways they have things happening. There's FMV cutscenes. There's comic style, like comic panel style cutscenes. And there's just like character text box, all that. And the problem is that there's a bunch of points where the game just can't decide which one it wants to use. I'm going to be talking about the ending later in more spoilery terms because I do really think the ending needs to be talked about with this, but the ending was a particular example where I ended up missing part of it the first time I played through it because I didn't notice, I didn't realize that they were switching which storytelling mode they wanted to go with. And I thought, oh, okay, it's time for me to play again. Hit a button. Oh, wait, I just skipped through something. It's, there's three different ways they do it. And the ending jumps between those three ways just constantly. And it's not always... There were a lot of times where I was wondering, okay, why did they... If people weren't done talking, why did they get rid of the comic cutscene thing? If this was all already happening, why not just keep it with the FMV cutscene? And, you know, it's a level of inconsistency that takes something that could have been great, but in this case, it was just kind of distracting. Now, now the big things working against this game are that, one, it is a really short game. It's not it's not particularly difficult. Like if you want to explore and find stuff, you have a much easier time with everything. So you're not likely to really die in this game until like the end part where to be fair, it does go through a difficulty spike. But, you know, the ending... Okay, the ending I really gotta talk about here because it's... It's one of those things that... 
it was both really strong and also a huge missed opportunity. Basically, and everything from this point on is all spoiler. Basically, the whole game, you're going through various different interpretations of the afterlife. So there's the fairy realm, which, you know, it's just a peaceful, serene forest. There's Warcadia, which is basically kind of like a modernized Valhalla. There's a realm of just judgment. There's a realm of torment. There's one of... It's kind of like Limbo, just an endless maze where you're just wandering forever. And, you know, it's very nice how they had that all done. The problem is that, you know, the end brings it all together and devotes very little time to it. Basically, it's kind of implied throughout the whole game that you're not really seeing what the afterlife is really like. You're just seeing all these representations that have existed throughout the ages. And in the last level, you find a tree, the Tree of Knowledge, they called it, and it's pierced with this one spear. The whole time, there's these two warring armies, and Ellen and Keats end up on opposite ends of it. One side wants to take the spear out, which would reveal the knowledge of what the afterlife is truly like to everyone, both the living and the dead. And another side wants to keep it in there. And it actually brings up a decent philosophical debate. If you knew what the afterlife was like, how would that affect the way you live this life? How much would you not even bother doing with this life if you knew what was coming in the afterlife? What moral codes would you develop if you knew how it would actually affect you in an afterlife. And it actually brings up a very nice philosophical debate that I wasn't really expecting, but I'm the kind of guy who likes when that sort of thing shows up. The problem is that it's immediately rushed out for the rest of the ending. And, you know, they kind of just jump to, okay, yeah, we're just going to leave the spear in there. And they just move on with the final boss. And it really kind of feels like something like that. It was a bigger, it was a bigger point than maybe the game devs realized. I kind of wanted to see a little more done with that, and instead it just got rushed out for the final boss, who was actually pretty difficult. I gotta say, as easy as I found most of the game, the final boss was actually a pretty welcome challenge, because the whole time throughout the game you're accumulating all these all these folks and all these spirits and then in the last boss they get taken away from you and it's in this awesome enough scene where the final boss who I'm not going to spoil 
is about to just charge right through the nether worlds and just punch a hole right into right into the normal world and you know it's actually it's actually very well done with the ending except for that one thing that's really a little rushed but I mean the the biggest problem with three two one action the biggest killer with the ending is that remember I said earlier that there's three different ways the game tells you things there's the person and big dialogue box there's the comic book style and there's just the full FMV sequence the entire ending sequence there they just keep jumping around with that to the point where I ended up accidentally skipping something because I thought it was time for me to play again but instead they were just jumping to a different style and I ended up missing a huge thing and without it a bit of the ending made zero sense I mean it made it made a little sense because there were questions I was asking myself like the entire game and you know the big question was that okay so Ellen was the one chosen for this you know this was there's the two main characters but really this is Ellen's story so why does Keats have these abilities? I don't quite understand that part. But, you know, it's kinda, it's kinda wrapped up a bit in the ending, but not quite enough without the one section that got skipped through. Without that one section, it's not quite wrapped up enough to really make that much sense. So yeah, the ending is both the strongest point of the game and the weakest. Considering the fact that there were some points in this game that, you know, really the game didn't need that urgently. It still didn't really give nearly enough time to the ending. They really could have done a lot with it, and instead it just kind of got rushed out. So anyway, yeah, that's my review of Folklore. It's got a strong enough story to keep you going. It doesn't take that much time to get through. And it's not... There's not really a lot of wasted time there. The... One big flaw to it is that the ending is a little rushed and the storytelling styles they were going with can get a little distracting when they keep switching around like in the middle of stuff. Overall, I would say definitely check this game out. This is Natesh. Keep enjoying the videos and subscribe to help the channel and see more.